this video, we're going to talk about the potential earthquake hazards and their effects. The learning competencies for this video is to identify various potential earthquake hazards and analyze the effects of different earthquake hazards. And the specific learning outcome is to explain the different potential earthquake hazards. Okay? Since 2011, we record all of the earthquakes in the Philippines and every year, we encounter about 2,000 earthquakes. Just last August 2020, a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake hit Masbate in the Philippines where 48 were injured and one person died. So what is an earthquake? What was that? An earthquake is a feeble shaking to violent trembling of the ground produced by sudden displacement of rocks or rock materials below the Earth's surface. Now, there are four types of earthquakes. The tectonic, volcanic, collapse, and explosion earthquakes. We're not going to discuss each one of them, but I'll just give you an overview about it, okay? Tectonic earthquakes are those generated by the sudden displacement along faults in the solid and rigid layer of the Earth. Now, earthquakes induced by rising lava or magma beneath the active volcanoes are called volcanic earthquakes. Collapse earthquakes, on the other hand, are also called mine bursts. They are generally smaller and most commonly occur near underground mines. Remember that collapse earthquakes are instigated by the pressure generated within the rocks. Lastly, we have the explosion earthquakes. These are caused by nuclear explosions. They are, essentially, the only man-triggered kind of earthquakes and represent the biggest impact of modern-day nuclear war. So, nuclear attack on Hiroshima is one of the examples. This video will focus on tectonic earthquakes. So, just a little more background about the earthquake. Earthquakes originate in tectonic plate boundary. So the focus is the point inside the earth where the earthquake started. So this is sometimes called as the hypocenter. And the epicenter is the point on the surface of the earth directly above the focus. Okay? It is the FIVOX or the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology who is the one mandated to mitigate disasters that may arise from volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunami and other related geotechnic phenomena. So if you have time, please visit the PVOX website at www.pvox.dost.gov.ph Why? Why, why? There are times that after an earthquake, there will be a fault. So a fault refers to a fracture, fissure, or a zone of weakness where movement or displacement has occurred or may occur again. A fault is said to be active fault if it has historical and contemporary seismicity and has evidence of fault slip based on displaced rocks or soil units of known age and displaced landforms. When we say seismicity, it refers to the measure of the frequency of earthquakes in a region. So for example, the number of earthquakes of magnitude between 5 and 6 per 100 square kilometers. Okay, so basically, an active fault is defined as a fault which has moved within the last 10,000 years. Okay, and now let's start with the five different earthquake hazards. Okay, so again, let's recall the term hazard. Um, what's up with that? Hazards are events or phenomena that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, property damage, loss of livelihood and services, social and economic disruption, or environmental damage. The first one is the ground shaking, as you can see in this GIF. So ground shaking is a disruptive up, down, and sideways movement or motion experienced during an earthquake. So, a strong ground shaking can cause objects to fall, break windows, collapse the structure, among others. For example, the collapse of Hyatt Hotel in Baguio City after the July 16, 1990 
Luzon earthquake. Most parts of the Philippines will experience shaking at different degrees depending on several factors. For example, one is the magnitude of the earthquake. Second, the distance of one's location from the fault that moved and the local below surface conditions. Following ground shaking is ground rupture. So ground rupture is the displacement on the ground due to movement of fault. This will be experienced by areas where fault passes through. Okay? So note that not all cracks on the ground that people see after a strong earthquake are faults. Some may just be superficial cracks because of the ground failure. The movement may have vertical and horizontal components and may be as small as less than 0 0.5 meters. So for example, the Masbate 1994 earthquake. But I can't see a picture, so here's an approximately 1.3 meters to 2 meters uplift way back February 2012 in Barangay Makinli, Gihulngan City in Negros Occidental. So the movement may be as big as 6 meters ground rupture, like this one way back July 1990 at Karangalan Nueva Ecija. So next hazard is tsunami. Tsunami is a series of sea waves resulting from the disturbance of ocean floor by an earthquake. So this is a series of Sea waves commonly generated by under-the-sea earthquakes and whose height could be greater than 5 meters. Okay, remember, 5 meters. So examples of recent tsunami events in the Philippines are the August 1976 Moro Gulf earthquake and tsunami. So this picture shows the tsunami damage at Barangay Tibuan, Lebak, Mindanao. Okay. This one is way back March 2011, Eastern Japan, Tsunami and Earthquake. Next hazard is liquefaction. So liquefaction is a process that transforms the behavior of a body of sediments from that of a solid to that of a liquid when subjected to extremely intense shaking. So as a result, any heavy load on top of the sediment will either sink or tilt as the sediment could no longer hold the load. So it looks like this. Okay, such is what happened in the Gupan city during the July 16, 1990 earthquake. So if you're going to look at this bridge, it was completely destroyed. Lastly, we have the earthquake-induced landslides, which are failures in steep slopes or hilly slopes triggered by an earthquake like this one. Remember that the loose thin soil covering on the slopes of steep mountains are prone to mass movement, especially when shaken during an earthquake. So many landslides occur as a result of strong ground shaking, such as those observed on the mountainsides along the National Highway in Nueva Ecija, as captured by Fernando Sepe Jr., and the road leading up to Baguio City during the July 16, 1990 earthquake, which looks like this. So this picture shows the road leading up to Baguio during that earthquake. So it's the city's most famous landmark that welcomes tourists passing through the Cannon Road. So this was also captured by Fernando G. Sepe Jr. So on the morning of October 15, 2013 at 8.13 a.m., a magnitude 7.2 earthquake struck the island of Bohol. There are 222 people died and 976 people went missing. So the earthquake also felled national heritage, including 10 centuries-old churches in Bohol and Cebu. My video, please watch this. I have to do it. 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 I have to